Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having an amazing day. We've got quite a bit to get stuck into today, but the first topic I want to go into is some more benchmarks for the Old Lake 12900K. Now, of course, ever since the qualification samples released into the wilds, we have been seeing the leaks and benchmarks come thick and fast for the 12900K. And today we have a veritable suite of benchmarks to discuss a combination of synthetic and gaming results, giving us a decent preview of the 12900K's performance. So as for the source for these particular rumours, or benchmarks I should say, these come from, well the first set of benchmarks come from Billy Billy's member Enthusiast Citizen, who has been a very busy bee benchmarking the 12900K retail unit for a while now. And they have provided several old lake benchmarks. And now he made up a bit of an odd move, let's just say. He submitted a review of the RX 6600 non XT. Not strange, I'm sure he'd agree. But he did so on a core 12900K test bench, which obviously is an unreleased platform with issues, and it's obviously it's not released, it's still being worked out. But regardless. It is important to acknowledge that and also important to acknowledge the rig. And obviously, these are some educated guesses. It looks like an ASRock Z690 Steel Legend motherboard. As for the memory, as we can see here, it is a Zadak DDDR4-3866 memory with CL141434T 14, 14, 14, timings. And it was using a standard tower heatsink cooler, so thankfully no fridge memes required. Now obviously, Old League is a bit different. It has 16 cores and 24 threads, but it is a range of 8P core with 16 threads and 8E core with 8 threads, thanks to the hybrid architecture. And of course, again, still not released, and we do not know what BIOS this was running on. That's a very important consideration to keep in mind here. So obviously, we, we don't know what BIOS this was running on, as I just said, so... We have to kind of keep that in mind that we don't know what bias it was, what changes, if any, it, it has compared to like the latest bias for your motherboard. Is this a bias that's actually going to be released to reviewers, stuff like that. So it's just an important thing to tuck under your hat. And obviously Old Lake is apparently going to run better on Windows 11 as well. So just keep those things in mind. Anyway. Let's go straight into the benchmarks. So we have a suite of 3D Mark results to go through here. I'm just going to go through the numbers and then we're going to talk comparisons. So first of all, we have Time Spy. We see a CPU score of 17,915 and then Time Spy Extreme was 9,004. You can also see results here for Fire Strike Extreme. Physics score is in the middle, 41,278, and combined is at the bottom, 4,420, at least I think so. Sadly, cannot read the language here, but that is normally how Fire Strike Extreme presents results to you. We see graphics in the, at the top, then physics, then combined at the bottom. And then of course, finally, for our last results, we see Firestrike Ultra. But let's go back to the Time Spy results because the kind folks over at WCCF Tech, thankfully and very helpfully, have put together a comparison graph. Because it's all well and good for me to rattle off a bunch of numbers about how well Old LA did in Time Spy and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, what's the price of fish this week? But it doesn't really matter or have any real meaning without comparisons against you know its competitors and previous generations. So full credit to them, and of course you can find their article linked below. So as you can see from their graph, the 12900K is significantly ahead of the competitors here. Obviously it trounces the 10900K, that's hardly shocking, but it also leaves 11900K, 5950X and 5900X in its dust. There's a pretty big gap here, but again, this is not final results, this is not a final sample even, and obviously, again, we do not know what BIOS this was run on. All very important factors to keep in mind. I'm not saying we should throw these results in the bin. Just facts we should consider. Now, as for the gaming benchmarks, well, the only comparative performance benchmark we have here, unfortunately, is for the first set, which is for Forza Horizon 4. And you can see the specs of the machine, or at least some of them, on the left-hand side here and one of them is the 12900K. And as for these results, we can see that the 12900K scored 190 FPS at 1080p while running on Windows 11, and the 5950X scored 189 with the same settings, but again on Windows 10. So in this particular result, the difference between the two is pretty damn small. 2% lead over the 5950X. Now obviously I've mentioned a bunch of things that we need to keep in mind for these results, but there's one more thing that's really important, especially 
for the gaming results, and that is uh, obviously this is a RX 6600. So there's a very real possibility that the 1200K and 5950X in these benchmarks were GPU bound. So I would very much like to see this test repeated with, you know, a 6800 XT or an RTX 30 high-end card. My point is that while these are great results to finally see some gaming benchmarks, we cannot take this as, yep, this is the final results of how the battle between the 1200K and 5950X work out. And we are going to go through the other results, but again, it's a little bit hard to judge without any comparisons. But still, for the sake for the sake of completeness, let's discuss them. The other results were Rainbow Six Siege. We see a score of 252 frames per second at 1080p, and Shade of the Tomb Raider 112 FPS at 1080p. So unfortunately, we can only really consider the first result because again, the lack of comparison makes these other results a little bit meaningless. But still, nice to see some gaming results, and hopefully we will see lots of tests shown off by Intel at their official reveal, which is fully expected to be coming soon, TM. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's move on to our next topic, as NVIDIA have apparently yet another RTX 30 cards. Apparently they don't have enough of those lately. Now, do you guys remember the RTX 3050 and the RTX 3050 Ti? I know it's been some time, but there's a faint bell ringing in the back of your mind, like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Wasn't that a, a thing that we saw on a roadmap? Obviously, we've seen a mobile version of 3050 Ti and 3050, but there has been no sign of any desktop models. But now we have a new rumour, thanks to Kapiti7 Kimmy. Now, he has really emphasised here that this is a rumour, so you know the drill, guys, Pinch of Salt TM is definitely required. But with that in mind... According to him, we could see for the 3050 Ti a GA106150 GPU with 3072 CUDA cores and either 6 gig or 12 gigs of memory and would directly compete against the RX 6600 non-XT. As for the 3050 non-Ti model, according to Capiti's rumour, we could see a GA107 350 GPU with more TGP and we could see 2304 FB32 and 90 watts. And we would expect to see either 4GB or 8GB memory capacity as options for this SKU. Sadly, no possible launch date or anything like that, but here you are. Some rumours about desktop versions of 3050. Now, genuinely, I'm not sure how much interest there is in this. Obviously, it's been an absolute nightmare trying to get a hold of a GPU this year. Yes, things are a little better now, but they're still not great. And... People are just very frustrated, and I do not blame them in the slightest. Now, obviously, this is a lower-end GPU that can produce more volume of this, but let me know, guys. I think people are just going to wait for next year when things are going to be calmer, and we've got RTX 40, only 3, and all that good stuff. But let me know what your plans are. I'm curious. And last thing I just want to throw in as a little topic of interest, something for you guys to chew on, is there was those rumours last week about TSMC potentially building a fab in Japan and joining forces with Sony. Well, that deal is now on, according to Nikkei, and the fab is set to start construction in 2022. And as with all of these things when it comes to fabs and construction and all that, production is expected to begin sometime in 2024. Now, unfortunately, this isn't going to be for anything cutting edge or extreme TM, when it comes to process nodes because it's going to be for imaging sensors and EV components and it's said to focus on 28 and 22 NM nodes according to Tim Culpin who writes for Bloomberg. Nikkei also did back this up. They reported that this fab will make chips in the 20 NM range. Didn't go into much detail beyond that other than saying the nodes are over a decade old. Plenty of products are still made on nodes older than that and obviously not everything needs a cutting edge node. So while this is interesting, this is not going to be used for your latest 3NM or 5NM or anything like that. Anyway, that's me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Your support really is appreciated, guys. I genuinely do mean that. So thank you from both myself and Paul. And of course, if you're new to the channel, thank you for your support. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.